Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, Mufi. <coughs> How are you? Hi, <laughs> Jay. <laughs> That's Mufi Adaman. used to be mayor. He's been all over the place. You know, you're going to have a CV, a CV fest on all the things he's done, but we don't have enough time in the show to do a CV <laughs> fest. So we just say formerly the mayor, and now he's the CEO and president of HLTA. Hey, well, that that has amazing. no, no uh, connection with lawn tennis. That's the <laughs> Hawaii. <laughs> now, now you got me. The Hawaii... Uh, uh, Lodging and Tourism Association. Yes. Okay, HLTA. And uh, he's done really incredible things in the past few years, and I saw him last only a few weeks ago at the uh, uh, Visitor Industry Charity Walk, which was really terrific. And, and these kids from McKinley, the McKinley Band, were all around him. They loved him. He made a few statements. We have it on our movie on OC16. If you want to see what movie said to the kids on the McKinley <laughs> Band, you can see that. Welcome to the show, movie. Thank you, Jay. Always good to see you. You're always good for a laugh or two. <laughs> yeah. We had a standing ovation from movie before, before the show began. You want to tell the background of that? Well, it was uh, in, in, in the city council chambers, and it was a bill that you were pushing very passionately for. And I happened to be on the same side of you, with you on that issue, and we made some progress on it. And uh, there you were, you got up. It was usually a, a chamber that, you know, decorum and protocol and the like, and you gave me this standing ovation. <laughs> And a place was filled with people. And a place was filled with up people. Up to the chandeliers. You know, the bit went wild. I don't think it's ever been done again after that. We always remind ourselves of that moment. It's a precious moment. So uh, how did the uh, visitor walk do? I mean, it, it seemed to me that it had a lot of vitality uh, on all sides of the coin. You know, it's uh, one of these things that's been, we've been doing for 40 years, Jay. And it's part of the visitor industry's way of giving back uh, to the community. And uh, it's grown phenomenally. Uh, it's held on every island because we have neighbor island chapters in every county. Uh, and this year we raised nearly $2.5 million and counting, which is an all-time record. That's great. Yeah, and uh, we're going to be able to help uh, well over 350 uh, nonprofit organizations. Uh, all the money that is raised on that island stays on that island. So Lanai, Molokai, mm. Maui, Kauai, Big Island, uh, and Oahu get to keep that money there. So uh, we and we do it every year. It happens the same time, the first three weekends in May. But it's a year-long uh, effort in terms of the planning that goes into it, the preparation, and just to see the people come out, whether it's the youth, whether it's the kupuna, uh, whether it's people uh, in the military. Uh, they sort of all come together because they recognize that this is a great cause and, and we love doing it from the hospitality industry. We sort of follow the admonition to whom much is given, much is required, and this is why we do it every year without fail. Well, you know, it's, there's a public policy issue there as far as the connection of the sectors. You know, um, you know hospitality is really the biggest industry these days. It used to be the three legs of the stool, do you remember? Right. It was military, agriculture. And hospitality now it's pretty much hospitality so it's very important that we have this industry and very important that we support it and we make it efficient and profitable and we participate in it um, but but we also have to have connection with it we can't you know let it go adrift and it can't let us go adrift we have to have this connection and I think the visitor walk and, and the fundraising that you mentioned it's all part of that it's part of a, a larger effort am I right to connect the two. Exactly, and you know, we, we recognize that uh, ours is an industry that's very fragile. Uh, either man-made or natural disasters can cause us to go south. And so in the good times, you have to ride that wave as long as possible. And at the same time, we have to do all we can, and this is where the connection comes in. Whether it's government, the private sector, uh, labor, uh, everybody all coming together to ensure that we can keep this industry as strong as possible, because you're exactly right. Uh, we're very dependent on tourism, and we recognize that. All the diversification efforts of the state uh, have not gone as well as, as probably we, should, we imagined or dreamed about, and everything comes back to tourism. It's our core competence. It's what yeah. we do very well. Yeah. How, how exactly well is it doing these days? We have, what, 10, 12 million people coming here every year? We have an enormous juggernaut of tourist activity here. Yeah, well, we're not, <clears throat> this year we'll probably hit 10 million. 
uh, but we have been growing incre incrementally during the past six years, six years of uh, growth every year. And it usually doesn't happen that way. It would come in two or three year cycles and we'd kind of hit a slump and then we'd go back up again. But we've been blessed, we've been very fortunate. But at, at the same token, competition is intense. Uh, sure. all over uh, and we also have some issues we have to talk about here at home and that is how much tourists uh, is uh, is too many uh, for Hawaii should we be uh, doing more with the quality of tourism that we'd like to see or should we do doing more with our attractions with our resources should we ensure uh, that the local people will always feel connected and that we're just not doing these things so that we can bring more visitors here so all those things all play uh, very nicely uh, in terms of one uh, over, uh, I should say, one very dominant message that we put out there that it's an industry that we've been very fortunate it provides the greatest number of jobs, but at the same time, we have to be looking at the quality of that industry, the quality of those jobs, and our quality of life. Yeah. So, you have many organizations, um, we call them community service or trade association or nonprofit organizations that feed into this, uh, this, this kind of group of organizations that are in in, in the industry, around the industry. And I, I've always felt that HLTA, Hawaii Lodging Tourism Association, is going to be the biggest one. It's going to be the one at the point. It's going to be the one that is most engaged with the hotels, most engaged with the workers, the unions, if you will, most engaged with the activities that take place in Waikiki. Am I right about that? I, I think you're right, but I, I think we also recognize that we can't do it alone. We need collaboration across the board. I think one of the advantages we bring to the table is that we started off as a hotel association, purely a hotel association. HHA. HHA, yes, and, and we've been around for 70 years. Uh, and then we moved into what we call the Hawaii Hotel and Lodging Association. And when I came on board, uh, I felt that um, we needed to do the Big Ten and encompass uh, all of tourism. So we changed our name to the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association. So we still have... Uh, a dominant group in our organization made up of hotels, but the biggest number of members are what we call our allied members. These are organizations that are not hotels, very dependent on tourism, whether it's the Royal Hawaiian Center, whether it's Hawaiian and sure. Alaskan Airlines, whether it's the Polynesian Cultural Center. So um, our organization also is driven by the fact that we do not rely on government funds. We're strictly private sector driven. We rely on our dues and contributions uh, that businesses give us. And our mission is threefold, education uh, of uh, the importance of tourism. To, to the public. Uh, to the public and to our members. Mm. We don't want our members taking it for granted that the jobs will mm. always be there. They're not advocacy. Take it for granted, yeah. We have to advocate, whether it's in uh, the state capitol or the county council chambers or in the community itself as they grapple with the issues of tourism. And last but not least is uh, philanthropy, which you saw with the charity walk, with the mm -hmm. scholarships that we give every year. That gets the, everybody's attention, for that, sure. That gets everybody's attention. So it's a, it's a threefold mission, but it's all um, neatly wrapped in this package uh, that we call uh, the preservation and the strengthening of tourism. You've been there for several years already. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a great placement, by the way, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and I wonder how, how it's changed under you and how it's changed for you. I brought a very strong neighbor island focus. Uh, we've always had the neighbor islands part of it, but as many things happen, uh, oftentimes things become Honolulu-centric or Oahu-centric, and I've really changed that. Uh, I, it's a, a, a philosophy that I took with me in government when I was mayor. I formed the Hawaii Council of Mayors, where the mayor of Honolulu was on the same level uh, with the mayor of Maui, Kauai, uh, and the Big Islands, and I've done the same with our organization, uh, that the neighbor islands feel very uh, very well represented. Building bridges. Yeah. Uh, secondly, uh, we've also reached out to the allied members, and we've grown that part of it, where people recognize that we're not just a hotel uh, organization, as important as that may be, but we want everybody to feel connected to tourism and that we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. uh, and thirdly, uh, we've enhanced the things that we've done in the past. For example, we've got We've uh, broadened uh, our reach with scholarships. We've got hospitality scholarships now that we give to high school students. We never did that before. We have member scholarships that Maybe we provide for our members. Maybe those kids at McKinley and the band <laughs> so enthusiastic about you. <laughs> <laughs> we have culinary scholarships. Uh, we do all of that. And then um, within the organization, we formed various subcommittees now. It used to be just the membership committee and the charity walk committee. Now we have a women in lodging committee. 
It's all about strengthening the women in the workforce and, and ensuring that uh, women recognize and are going to be appreciated for being in the industry, but also they are uh, attaining uh, some of the best jobs that we have. Building there. careers. Yes. We have, uh, and this is something I've always been big on, Jay, is mentoring. Uh, we've started an organization patterned after the Pacific Century Fellows Program that I've done for several years now that takes mid-career professionals and gives them an opportunity to come together once a month. And then uh, it's kind of like a college fraternity where um, they, they bond with each other in the classes. We've had 16 classes in Hawaii, uh, but also um, with, with the groups at large. So we started something called the Hospitality Young Professional Entrepreneurs. We call it Hype. Hype it up, <laughs> where we're really reaching out to the millennials. They feel we have an engineering council. We now have a housekeeper's council. Um, all those things. Oh, you've uh, been busy. Yeah, all those things lend itself to the fact that people feel connected and they feel that whatever aspect of it that you're interested in the industry or just in business or our environment or our quality of life, we have an opportunity for you to be involved with us because of these committees. Yeah, careers, connection. So, how about you, though? Um, you know, it's been, oh, oh my gosh, my go goodness, uh, what, eight, ten years since you were mayor? Uh, and um, how have you changed? How has this changed you? I think you have a little more gray in the yes, temples, yes, but yes. the hair's still there. It's important. <laughs> you know, I, I've come to learn to appreciate, appreciate it's not where you serve, it's how you serve. And I also have recognized very strongly that uh, we can all make contributions uh, to the community uh, wherever we are in, in life. And, and certainly uh, I've enjoyed uh, being in, in the public sector. I enjoy the years that I served as mayor, as a city council member, as a director of under, in administration such as Governor Wahei and Governor Ariyoshi, and working in Washington, D.C. for four different presidents. But yeah. at the same time, uh, life goes on. Uh, one door closes, another door opens. And uh, I've recognized that uh, it's important that no matter where you are, to continue to give back. And that's where I get my biggest joy and fulfillment is uh, wherever job that I've gone to, I've always made sure that we're improving, enhancing, and leaving the place better than we found it. And I've never stopped the things that I've done. I still do scholarships, Jay, that I started many years ago. Uh, I give out scholarships every year in my parents' name uh, for, for scholar athletes. I do Harvard Book Awards. Uh, I take a girls' basketball team every year uh, to the mainland compete. And I remember when I first went into women's basketball 25 years ago, the guys used to tell me, what are you doing with girls, man? They can't play basketball. It's the guys. And it's changed. It's evolved because of Patsy Mink and Tyler Line and gender equity. Uh, and, of course, the Pacific Century Fellows Program that I talked about. So I do a lot of things. I, I enjoy radio. I do two radio shows know, yeah, every week, yeah. one on Friday right here in this Candy building, Eye. Fact, yeah. That's right. And, and another one on, uh, on Cool Go there at Salem Media. Uh, and I write in midweek. So um, it's, it's very fulfilling. It keeps me busy. It keeps me energized. And by the same token, uh, always looking to make a difference in wherever I've gone. Yeah. Well, that brings me to a question that I did want to ask you, and I guess you can anticipate my question. It's, uh, you're, you're into public service, for sure. Uh, and you, you, know, you deal with community. You, you connect with the community. It always was, always will be. Um, and everyone knows who you are. Everyone knows who you are, Mufi. Um, say Mufi, I mean, everybody knows. <laughs> so, um, is, there, is there another chapter of political life for you coming soon? You know, I, I call this my sabbatical period. <laughs> That's what I'm, so, I've been on an extended sabbatical. I, I'm enjoying it, but then again, in life, you never say never to, to, to anything, whatever it might be. So, uh, I'm enjoying what I'm doing now, and uh, I don't have any plans in 2018. Uh, certainly, I'm going to keep a watchful eye on, on a number of uh, issues. and. And, uh, and seats that are out there, especially when it relates to tourism or people just wanting to do well, uh, I think they need to be supported. So I'm not have gone exactly silent on these things there, but I think for now I'm in a good place, uh, and um, the door is always open in the future. Okay. Well, the, the question does present itself pretty regularly to me. Yeah. Let's take a short break, okay, Mufi? We'll come back. And we'll talk some more about the other agencies that are involved, the relationships that are involved. And I do want to cover that question you raised with Odd Stender has taken a position on this. Is too many tourists? We can talk about that, too. Yeah. Hello, everyone.
everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii, uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand the Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live with Mufi Hanneman, learning about stuff. Maybe you didn't know all the stuff about <laughs> Mufi Hanneman. So, Mufi, uh, I want to just, uh, you know, look at the universe of organizations that are side by side with you in dealing with the tourist sector, um, the lodging and hotel sector, and I made a list. Let's see, one is the uh, Hawaii Tourism Authority, HTA, which took a hit on its budget. Yeah. So, what's, what's the relationship? What are they doing vis-a-vis? -vis? What are you doing? Hawaii Tourism Authority is our, is our number one marketing agency in the state. It's government funded. We support uh, HTA to the extent that we want those tax dollars that we collect, called the transit accommodation tax, uh, to go for three things. One, the marketing mission of HTA. Obviously, uh, assistance to the counties uh, for what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, when a tourist calls 911 or a local resident, mm -hmm. we want to make sure police, firefighters, lifeguards, what have you. And public safety has always been very important as a calling card for people to come to Hawaii because we're a safe place. Uh, and then the third thing is uh, assistance to the convention center. So the convention center thing has, um, is, is, is really getting to a good place. We got strong new leadership there uh, and, and they're moving in the right direction. But we still need to give assistance to the counties and we're always very concerned about monies for marketing. Um, at the end of the day, you know, our competition is, is, is out there. Oh yeah. And, and, and they're breathing down our neck so we can't, um, regress from those efforts and the like. Um, so those things are very important because the biggest trend, Jay, that has happened through the years, unfortunately in our opinion, is most of the hotel room tax money now goes to the general fund. 60% of the $565 million plus that we collect in hotel room tax goes to the general fund. And when it goes to the general fund, it can you be never used. never see it again. Yeah. Everything can be used for that purpose. So our thing to the legislature and to the governor has been be careful uh, because you're, you're, you're straying from that mission, and besides, um, you're also heaping other taxes on us, uh, whether it's trying to increase the transit accommodation tax or this past session, and something that we are opposed to very stridently, is the imposition of the resort fee, to put the tax on the resort fee. It's one thing on mandatory resort fees at the hotels, but how the bill is written at the end of the day that we're very surprised of, it's any amenity, any benefit, that you or I or a visitor coming to Hawaii and staying at a hotel, you see it on your bill. So you could be taxed for uh, internet service, uh, perhaps uh, using the sauna, the exercise room, your parking, your valet will be an extra 10.25% put on Everything that. Everything gets taxed. Yeah, so we're asking the governor to say, look, now is not the time. We've just seen statistics that show from the Council of Revenues that they're getting $125 million uh, surplus and if they're looking at this resort fee uh, as uh, $11 million, as some have suggested, take it from there and don't put another tax on top of us because of the importance of yeah. marketing and everything else we want to do for tourism. Yeah. So that's where we are with Hawaii Tourism. Hawaii doesn't want to have a reputation yeah. of nickel-diming people. Exactly. And um, it's very important that we, you know, that we have a reputation of being fair-minded about exactly. the way we charge. Well, since this story has emerged, I've seen it now, uh, and then the Star Advertiser broke it the other morning. On the major newspapers in our competitive markets throughout the United States, they're always saying, oh, 
Hawaii hotels may be uh, too much uh, for people to afford it. They're going to put another tax upon you. So these are the kind of things that are very price sensitive, and we've got to be worried about. So we're putting a lot of pressure yeah, yeah. On, on the governor to, to and veto that bill. the competition is always there. The competition is always there. So in terms of Hawaii Tourism Authority, we support their marketing efforts. We think there can be some improvement in some areas. For example, I think they don't, they're not doing enough in sports tourism. Mm. That's an area to me that hasn't even reached it, its potential. Uh, in terms of what we can do to ensure that people will look to stage major events here in Hawaii. So they need to up their game in that area as well as some Absolutely of the things. Absolutely agree. And furthermore, that's another way to connect people who come here as visitors and the people who are here, you know, in the community because they would connect and they would meet each other and everybody would be happy for the connection. Exactly. And that's one of the things that we take great pride in is uh, the accomplishments of our, of our local people, whether it's sports, entertainment, and the arts. We need to promote that out there, make yeah. it a strong tourism yeah. drive. Yeah, integration. Exactly. exactly. Okay, another one is the, uh, let's see, the Waikiki Improvement Association. I guess that sounds like infrastructure. What's, what's, how does that relate to what you do? Waikiki Improvement Association, basically, and that's Rick Eggett, who used to be my deputy uh, <laughs> okay. when I was uh, director of Department of Business, Economic Development Tour. He's done a wonderful job. Uh, I call him sometimes uh, the unofficial mayor of Waikiki, because that's his job. Uh, those two square miles, he works with uh, the property owners, many of the business people that really want to make sure that we never let our guard down to ensuring that Waikiki is always a safe, secure, and a positive place to be, whether it's for the locals or for tourists. So we work very closely uh, with Waikiki Improvement Association. We sponsored a public safety conference when uh, we started to get an increase in crimes against tourists in that area. Mm -hmm. Together we came, uh, we, we came together, we held a major conference, and we followed that up with a series of initiatives that we hope to bolster security in that area. We notice now there's a proliferation of gangs that are coming into Waikiki or youth groups uh, that are doing things yeah. perhaps they shouldn't yeah. be doing uh, yeah. after the, the midnight hour. There's got to be a vulnerability to the whole sector. You know, it's not only the gangs, but it's the crimes, it's the drugs, it's the homeless. And I think uh, my recollection is there's a Waikiki Community Health Center. Yes. It's out there in Kuhio somewhere. And that is a way for the industry maybe to, to help people and keep them off the streets, essentially. Exactly. So exactly. What, how much of a threat are all these things, and how, how can you minimize that? Well, threat? it's very much of a threat. We make it a, a big priority of ours to work with Waikiki Improvement Association, the health center, all those organizations that are there to make sure that you know the, 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 the entities or the people that are involved in Waikiki, be it the tourists, be it the workers, or be it the residents, that their needs, their priorities, their concerns will be addressed. And so I think we've done some major things along the way, but it's still not enough. For example, we've uh, contributed over $2 million over the past four years in the fight against homelessness. And one can argue that we haven't made much progress, <laughs> albeit that Got to uh, start somewhere, and yes, money helps. Money helps, money helps. And so one of the bills that we asked from the legislature is to match our contributions that we've given to these nonprofit organizations, like Institute of Human Services and others. Sure. If they can match it dollar for dollar with the marketing funds that we've set aside for Hawaii Tourism Authority. So that bill passed the legislature, is sitting on the governor's desk. We hope he signs it. So if we give a $25,000 grant, a $40,000 grant, not just in Waikiki throughout the state, the state's million dollars will match that, and that nonprofit organization will be able to have a lot more money uh, to go forward uh, with, with their yeah. mission. And so, again, the connection. The connection. So Waikiki Improvement Association is very important. Uh, we work with them uh, constantly. Rick and I talk weekly. We meet uh, constantly. to. Uh, work to see how we can do it. because the other important organization is the Waikiki Business Improvement District, yes. uh, which is funded by the property owners too. Uh, so, um, you know, it, it's a matter of always coordinating things and then, of course, having a nice rapport and relationship with the Honolulu Police Department is important. The other thing that we have uh, done a lot more of is making sure that the military feels connected. Uh, we never want the military to ever issue an edict and say, don't go to Waikiki anymore because it's not safe. So uh, I have encouraged and we have now a regular rapport and dialogue with key members of the military so that we're always on point with the concerns that they'll raise and at the same time see how we can mesh our safety and security efforts. Yeah, you got to control it. I mean, the thing, for example, was it last week or two weeks ago in Kaka'ako with the Japanese tourists that got beaten up? 
gee, that was awful. It was terrible. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's hard to anticipate when somebody's going to go nuts that way. Um, I, mean, I think the guy was on drugs, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, but but you have to take steps. You have right. to prevent it. You have to see you see into the future yeah. and uh, figure out ways to, to head it off, right? Yeah. Well, that's why you know we did this public safety workshop this past February because it was really an offshoot of what I did several years ago when I was on the Honolulu City Council, uh, and we saw an increase in crimes against Japanese visitors. The Japanese Council General very uncharacteristically was very blunt in coming up public and say. If Hawaii doesn't do more to protect our visitors, uh, we may go uh, elsewhere. And then we noticed at the same time, Florida was seeing a decrease in, in visitors there as a result of crimes against European tourists. Uh -huh. So we didn't want to repeat that. We got together. We brought everyone. Uh, I was a member of the council at that time. We worked with another important component of our industry back then and now the Hawaii Visitor Industry Security Association, H HHV, I know it well. which is made up of security folks in all the hotels uh, and working with government, HPD. And this time we worked with the prosecutor's office, sort of kind of replicating what we did back then that went a long way to addressing the problem then because as a result of that, the Waikiki Business Improvement District was formed. That was one of the recommendations that came out of that conference. So we have a series of recommendations that came out of the February conference that we're working on very diligently right now to follow up and follow through on. I, I, I said before the break that we should cover, we should cover Oz Stender's comment. He came and had a show with us. Mm -hmm. And for the proposition, there's too many tourists. Mm -hmm. We have to stop that. Um, this is, you know, the hard question. Mm -hmm. And if you went out in the crowd and asked, what do you think? A lot of people would say, too many tourists. Uh, I know you're working mm -hmm. against that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, is there a point? Uh, is there something we should be thinking about or doing to manage uh, the growing numbers of tourism? Well, this is where, and, and, and let me say this, I, I, I believe uh, that we cannot just open up our, the floodgates and say let as many tourists come to Hawaii. Uh, as a resident, I'd be very concerned about it, and I don't want to see that. So we're really reaching that point now uh, as we hit the 10 million mark. How many more tourists can we absorb in our island lifestyle environment? And this is where the Hawaii Tourism Authority really has to take a leadership role, because they have the state funds, the state funds go to them to be able to do marketing, but they should also be concerned about that other aspect. So we're ready to participate in those discussions. When I was a member of the city council, I remember there was a, there was a rhubarb between the council and Mayor Harris at that time who wanted to charge an admission fee at Hanama Bay because the thing similar back then. Too many tourists are going to Hanama Bay. That was fine. But the problem is the special fee that he wanted to assess, he wanted to throw it in the general fund. And that's when I rose up and said, no, Mr. Mayor, if we're going to charge a fee for Hanama Bay. It should go for it, tourism. Well, no, it should go into a special fund to go back to the bay. Right. So that we preserve, we enhance, right. we educate I people. Absolutely agree. We shut it down uh, an additional day of the yeah. week. We want to call it the Hanama Bay Nature Preserve. Yeah, perfect. All those things came into play. We need to have those discussions right now. Let's take that playbook that I worked with on the council and make sure now HTA and our state legislators and whoever is governor, uh, in this case, Governor Ige, will move forward on those discussions here. Uh, because if we don't, we are going to hit a point where people are going to say enough is enough and we don't care because uh, I can't get to the beaches anymore. I don't have enough right. water. in, in, and in that's my, alienation. And that's alienation. We don't want to see that. So those discussions have to take place. So if, to Oz Stender, who I know very well and respect, <laughs> I think he's right in that regard. But let's have a community a consensus in, in, in arriving at a decision here. I think the Native Hawaiian community, whether it's through OHA or other groups, they should be at the table, and we need to make some tough choices, almost like a con-con about tourism. <laughs> I love it, what a great <laughs> idea. Well, we can have a con-con right here, Mufi, because we should, we should continue this conversation. I can just, without itemizing, I can think of six or 10 more things that we could have discussed today that we should discuss in the future about tourism, about Waikiki, and about these islands and how it deals with tourism. It's the engine of our economy. We have to pay attention. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank Mookie you. Hannah. Thanks for having me on. Yeah.